Hey guys, what's up? Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? It's uh, it's Sunday morning. I did not get a chance to get into the garden last night and film for the. Uh, I guess this is week six update. I'll get it up tomorrow. Um, there's there's not much not much going on. The the girls are just bulk bulking up doing their thing. Um, but I have been getting a lot of questions on nutrients over the last few videos. I've been getting a lot of questions on nutrients, what I'm using, the boost formula, this, that, la di da di da, all that good shit. So I figure I come on here, we'll go over the charts, I'll show you guys, I'll screen share, I'll show you guys all my nutrient comparison charts. So that'll show Jax, 321, their recommended boost formula, my green jeans boost formula, Lucas, Veg Bloom, can of cocoa, the whole deal. You guys can all see them, their MPKs, everything they have and don't have in them, everything they need or don't need. And we'll, we'll go over it, um, why I'm using what I use and what the boost formula is and a lot of, you know, we'll get into it. So let's, let's let some people roll in here. It's, it's, it's not early, it's 10 o'clock on a Sunday, but nonetheless, let's, uh, this was a unscheduled live. So let's let some people roll in here, see what's going on. Let me pop out, uh, get the chat popped out. See who's in here. I know Grand Anonymous was in here fucking ASAP. What's up, man? Um, nice. Okay. Chat up. Let's get the live going. We should be good to go after that. Okay. Nice. Okay, so where, oh, where? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for those of you that don't know what nutrients I like to run or what nutrients I run on the regular here, um, I run Jack's Hydroponic. Now, this is Jax Hydroponic. It's known as the 51226 formula. And what makes it a hydroponic formula is that it has no calcium and all the uh, all the nitrogen, all the all the nitrogen is in nitrate form, which is, means it's readily available right off the bat to the plants without any kind of bacteria conversion known as nitrification. Uh, doesn't have to happen. We run that in combination with calcium nitrate, which is the only readily available form of calcium. And we do that so we can get our nitrogen levels and get our calcium levels correct on top of the one part formula. Now, in addition to that, the last part of Jack's three, two, one is the one, and let me grab it. One is Epsom salt. Epsom salt, you guys, if you guys think you know what Epsom salt is, you probably do. You can go down to CVS, the drugstore, and you can buy it. It is magnesium sulfate. It's good for the body. It's good for a few things. But more importantly, it is good for plants, and it is extremely good for magnesium. And when it ha and um, on top of that, when you are giving magnesium, it's not giving nitrogen. So anyway, long story short, that is Jack's Jack's Hydro and the 321. Now, the one common mistake is, is that 321 refers to these kind of nutrient ratios on your bags, and it doesn't. What Jack's 321 refers to is the formula at the formula ratio at which we use these. So we're going to be using three, and this is all by weight. We're going to be using three parts of Jack's Hydro by weight, so three grams per gallon would work. Two parts by weight of calcium nitrate, so two grams per gallon could work. And the last one is the one part or one gram per gallon of Epsom salt. Now, if you take those exactly literal, as I say, in three, two, one grams per gallon, you're going to come out at what I like to call about three quarters strength. Comes out at around seven, 750 micro, or micromoles, excuse me, um, PPM for your solution. And the actual full strength of that would be 3.6 grams per gallon of hydro. 2.4 grams per gallon of calcium nitrate and 1.2 grams per gallon of magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. Now, if you do the math right there, 3.6, 2.4, 1.2, that is the exact same ratio as 3 to 1. So if my plants need more nutrients, I up that I up the concentration. So we'll speed say 3.6, 2.4, 1.2, 1 but I'm not changing what they're getting or the balance of the diet at which they're getting there. They're still getting the same exact ratio as they're always getting. 
Now that's what I feed all throughout. Now this is this is the big one right here. This is what people freak out about. What do you feed when they're seedlings? What do you feed the first week of veg? How much do you feed during veg? What do you feed when you flip the flower? Now here it is, guys. Listen carefully. And what, what I say is what I mean right here. So when I say I use the exact same the whole time, I mean that. I mean from the point. I mean from the point that they are a little seedling like such, they are getting 850 ppm of Jax 321, full strength Jax 321. You can start and same plant, same nutrients, full strength Jax 321, 3.6, 2.4, 1.2. Now these are obviously much different sized plants, but again they are getting the exact same nutrients. Now let me try to explain the reason that is. Now if you go outside and you take a soil sample, six inches of soil sample, you send it in for testing. What it's gonna come out to, it's gonna give you some PPMs. And what those PPMs are, are essentially exactly what we're feeding in Jack. So when people say like, oh, does that burn, does that not? No, Jack's at the recommended full strength or even a touch more is not any kind of extreme situation that a plant would have to be used to. When it's going into a thousand ppm of, of, solu of feed solution, that's just like going into a happy, healthy, really rich organic soil. It's not going to burn. It's not going to do anything crazy. The plants are going to take what they need. And you know, since we are doing it in a well-educated hydroponic manner, we're not giving them anything in an excess or a deficiency matter that they're going to have to you know freak out and try to figure out. So, three, two, one, the whole time, start to finish. To this day, to this day, no matter what other formula I have ran, my own boost, Jack's boost, Lucas, um, any other ratios I've ever ran, nothing has ever given me the plant health, the ease of use, the ease of run, and the overall success that Jack's 321 has. Now, everyone needs to listen to that because everyone skips 321 and sees the word booster and gets really, really excited. Pisses me off because it's just an uneducated thing. Anyway. Jax 321 is the best nutrient formula solution I have ever given. Yes, EC is a better measurement. PPM doesn't matter. You guys all know how to convert it. E PPM is a conversion of EC. The EC I feed at is 1.6 to 1.8. So there you go, guys, for your ECs. Um, it's at a 500 scale is most common, and that is what my PPM matters. So yes, Sorry, there you go, guys, EC, 1.6 to 1.8. Sometimes it creeps up on 2.0, but that's including my tap water that goes into this. So, but what I really wanna get across to you guys is that I feed jacks three, two, one from the time they're this big to the time I start my flush or the time they're even harvested. Sometimes you just run it all the way through um, and you are not gonna run into issues. Now, with that said, over my growing career, not everything responds to 321 absolutely flawlessly. I've never put 321 on a, on a plant and had it shit the bed and just die or do anything crazy, any kind of mad deficiencies. That doesn't happen. But that's not to say that some plants don't need a little more magnesium. Some plants don't need a little bit more calcium. Some plants don't need a little bit more potassium. Some plants might need a little more. You get the point. There are, you know, cases. There's, you know, there's there's exceptions to the rules more than there is the actual rule, especially with this plant, because everything is slightly different. But if we use three, two, one, that is our baseline goal. And from there, we can do pretty much anything we want. Now, calcium and magnesium, those are your two probably most common deficiencies. If you're going with LEDs, probably even more so. Um, what people don't get is when I say feed three to one and they feed three to one exact and they go, oh, my plant, my plants running into a magnesium deficiency. What should I do, man? Well, if you guys paid attention at the beginning of the video, a little bit of nitrogen, most of your phosphorus, most of your potassium right here. The other thing this has is all of your micros. All your micros are in here. Calcium nitrate. The word is exactly what it is. It is calcium and nitrogen, nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. There is calcium, CA, and nitrogen, N. So let's think about this. Hmm, I'm running JAX 321 and my plant's showing a calcium deficiency. What should I do? Hmm, 
Mm. We have a product that's essentially pure calcium, more calcium than it is anything else. So what should we do if our plant's showing a calcium deficiency, boys and girls? We should add more calcium nitrate. Now, yes, you are going to be adding a little bit more nitrogen to the formula, but it's not going to be that much. And we're going to jump into the tables. I'm going to get over this little rant and excitement that we're here on. And we'll jump into the tables and show you what exactly. No. Oh, going on. You're just fucking with me, bro. Um, show you what exactly one gram of calcium nitrate adds to the formula. Now, on, on the counter side, let's say calcium's good. We don't have any like rust spots throughout the thing. We just have a little bit of, uh, you know, intersclerosis, a little, little yellowing in between the veins. We need just magnesium. What do we do? Part three is literally magnesium and sulfur. That's it. Magnesium and sulfur. Magnesium being highly, highly used in photosynthesis. Sulfur, not so much. Used for some flavor, some other things. But uh, long story short, we cover our sulfur bases really easy. So if we're short on magnesium, what do we do? We add magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. It's very, very simple. So if that means you're feeding 3.6, 2.4, and 1.5 grams per gallon of Epsom salt, that's fine. Your plants needed that extra magnesium. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not feeding extra magnesium. The other thing is, is Jax. Jax has magnesium in it. It's like five or 6% uh, magnesium, something like that. 6.3% magnesium. Where do you think that magnesium comes from? Is that, I, nah, I shouldn't say it. There's actually two places magnesium comes from in Jax. Potassium sulfate, which is lame. I don't even know why they use it, but whatever. Um, and magnesium sulfate, meaning Epsom salt is in Jax. Now, if I gave you a pack of jacks and I raised the magnesium levels and accordingly the sulfur levels to say 12%, you know, or 10%, and you never had to use magnesium sulfate again, would you really be using less magnesium sulfate? No, we just put magnesium sulfate in the mix. So if you need more magnesium, give more magnesium. If you need more calcium, give more calcium. If you need more nitrogen, also more nitrogen. Really, really simple there. And those are my number one, my number one most asked questions of what, I, you know, I, I'm low, on, uh, I need more calcium. What do I do? It's literally, it's called calcium nitrate. I'm low on magnesium. What do I do? It's called magnesium nitrate or magnesium sulfate. There's also magnesium nitrate. Now, the, the one thing with CalMag or calcium and magnesium that people really, they try to avoid is they don't want to add more nitrogen to the solution. And a lot of the calcium and magnesium or CalMag supplements that you get out there are made of these two things. This is your typical CalMag right here. This is what CalMag is made of. Magnesium sulfate and, or excuse me, magnesium nitrate and calcium nitrate. These two can be put together in the same bottle, in the same bag. I could dump this whole powder into this bag, nothing's going to happen. Chemically, they're fine. They're stable. They're not going to react with each other. All is good. The issue is with this baby right here, magnesium sulfate. Sulfur and calcium are the two most pretty much incompatible components in all of nutrients. They are the ones that if you mix them together in a solution, they're going to bond, they're going to form um, essentially drywall or gypsum, it's an insoluble form of calcium sulfate. So these cannot be used as the same product as one, you know, put in the same bag or the same bottle, but they can be used in the same reservoir once it's diluted to solution form. Now, at that point, you can add the two together and create your own kind of calcium or CalMag. But usually what I tell everyone is Calcium and magnesium are separate. They're separate elements. They're separate deficiencies, and they need to be addressed differently. So a calcium shows up usually as rust spots in between the leaves. I don't have any calcium deficient leaves here I could show you. Um, yeah, this, is close. this is just the bottom leaf. Some kind of like calcium little rust spots here and there. That's calcium. We're going we're gonna to provide just the calcium nitrate. Get Epsom salt, we get a little more, uh, 
a little more away from the rust spots and a little bit more into the insides of the veins, that's going to be magnesium. We're going to deal with it directly with magnesium sulfate. Okay, two, two, two. how do we... We are going to share my screen here. All right, guys. So now that I gave you the little deal on what jacks 321, what I use, why I use it, what to do if things go wrong, la di da di da. Here is the actual numbers behind that. Now we can look at successful gardens all day long and say, yeah, that works great, blah, blah, blah. But what is actually going on behind the curtain to get this success so that we can repeat this success, whether we do it with the name Jax or we do it with pure nutrient salts by ourselves, or we do it with Lucas or Vegplum or whatever it may be. The brand and the name does not matter. The magic behind it, um, and nowadays these new non-PGR and actual just pure nutrient salt based formulas is the actual ratios and what they consist of. So if we're looking here at my table, the first column we have Jack's 321 in what we call the full strength. That's 3.6, 2.4, 1.2 grams per gallon. You can see in my highlighted column here, these are the, these are the elemental ratios that you, or the elemental um, PPMs that we come up with. Now, if we scroll down just quickly and notice it checks every single box, except you get down here and you'll see three consistently empty boxes across all of them. Sodium, silica, and chloride, chlorine. Actually, I'm pretty sure that should be chlorine, not chloride. Nonetheless, um, sodium and chlorine, that's going to be your sodium, the sodium chloride. That's your table salt. That is the one thing when people say, oh, there's so much salt. It's salty. It's salty. That is actual salt. Um, so when you're saying, oh, it's salty, man, this is salt. And if you'll notice, there is no sodium, no chloride in any formula you see here. And you really won't see that across any hydroponic formula, no matter even if it's like some super PGR enhanced like advanced. You're really not going to see too much sodium or chloride going on. Silica, that is, it's debatable. I, I'm not going to say it's not useful, it's not helpful, but it's definitely not needed for plant growth or anything, but, it, but it's good. Um, nonetheless, anything that does contain silica is usually an additive. You're not, not going to uh, make or break your world on that, but uh, just, just note these are the three empty spots. In addition, you'll find above here in columns 8 through, I don't know, what is that, 14, or no, 8 through 13, you might notice a few more empties. These are the main, the micro, or the micro elements throughout all of them. You'll notice right here, Jax is covered on most of them. Veg Bloom is pretty much covered on all of them. These are where companies whether they're giving a, a micro-specific supplement or whatever, these are the micros they're adding. Notice as we go across, some of them are missing. Then if we go to the very top, your NPK, calcium and magnesium, these are what everyone knows. These are, these are the, the main numbers that you're seeing on the bags um, that you're going to be adjusting if you have issues or therefore. Okay. So what you'll notice here, now the last few here, I put can of coke on here because in the YouTube world, a lot of people are running canna because Vader and them run canna. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a very interesting formula. It's definitely one to its own. Um, they don't really follow some tip, typical uh, trends and things, but, uh, but it's on here nonetheless. But if we focus on everything that's before then, you'll actually notice a pretty similar um, Pretty similar output for a lot of a lot of figures here. Most most of that being the potassium and the nitrogen levels seem to be very similar across the board. And from my findings, anything from about 100 to 110 up to a maximum of around 150 ppm of nitrogen seems to be pretty sufficient for anything we'd be growing from uh, from veg all the way up and through flower. Next, we're going to go down to phosphor and look at these. These, This is the one where you will notice the boost formulas um, really hit the phosphor and PK hard. And a lot of them don't actually hit the potassium hard. They're, they're really just going after the phosphor. So if we move over right here to the Jax booster, which is what they recommend for the first two weeks of flower, you'll notice it maintains pretty similar nitrogen levels 
But look at that phosphor level. Three times that of pretty much any other formula in here, and almost double that of the elevated formulas, such as Lucas or um, the GG Boost formula, which does not appear to be in here for some reason. That's okay. We shall watch this. Okay. Okay, I can't get the GG. I can't get the GG boost formula onto this page right now. Um, but no big deal. Thank you, Grand Anonymous, for grabbing that question. Going through chat. All right, let's. Am I sponsored by Jax? No, I'm not sponsored by Jax. They, uh, what I showed you, these bags, they sent me this one time and a t-shirt. After me making, video, what do I have? Four, four videos just on Jacks. I have a Green Jeans Booster formula that is more well known than any product that they will ever make. Um, I have six years on recommending and playing with Jacks. And I also have countless videos, charts, and things posted on Instagram and out there in the world as information that people can't hide about. Um, so they uh, they support me in the sense that they like what I'm doing, and they've sent me, like I said, they've sent me a, a what is this? Two pounds, two pounds of Jack's Hydro and uh, two pounds of calcium nitrate. Um, over my career, I think I have bought. 200 pounds of jacks, and they've sent me two. So they've sent me 1% of anything I've ever used. Eh, I wouldn't say I'm sponsored. Yeah, and that's why I said at the beginning of this video, it doesn't matter whether it's jacks that makes this. Um, every nutrient company tells you, when they say things are derived from, they say like, oh, it's derived from uh, potassium nitrate, magnesium sulfate, monopotassium phosphate, <coughs> excuse me, a few different forms of iron, uh, copper, manganese, boric acid, ammonium, bleh, molybdate. You can just go get those. When it says derived from, they didn't do anything. It just means they, they mixed it with those. So you can go get those. And then you can find out in a nutrient calculator how much of each one of those you want to put in. And we can DIY Jax for even cheaper than Jax is. We can DIY Veg Bloom for pennies on the dollar. We can DIY, it's all easily done. It's just like, look at you guys complain when I tell you to get two fucking bags of Jax. You say, oh my God, why isn't there just a one bag system? What if I, what if I told you you had to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 components plus 14 components 15 components, and then have a scale that's accurate down to the thousandth of a gram. You guys wouldn't be into that. So anyway, long story short, it, it doesn't matter if it's Jax, doesn't matter what the company is that make that makes it. Like I said just a few minutes ago, it's those elemental ratios and those PPM outputs that are doing the magic of whatever the brand name of nutrients may be. So 
Um, so yeah, I, I don't like mixing all this. And when it comes down to the micros, it's really, really hard to mix micros because you use them in such, such, you need a really accurate scale. So when a company gives you a good base to work off, like Jax, or like, uh, you know, there's plenty of others out there. Um, you work with it. It just it saves you as a grower time or whatever. And I'm not doing anything that's above and beyond the recommended. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't do anything that's majorly off label like Jacks 3.6, 2.4. That's that's literally right off the Jacks website. The magnesium is the only thing that's not recommended on Jacks. But when you go to Jacks and you say it, they tell you to use. Uh, well, the newer ones they say 3.78 per gallon. Is what they say but on the old ones before they were into the little hydro world they were only an agricultural company and we only they only really had 25 pound things and basically their recommendations were for a thousand liters of solution not one gallon so long story short they came back what what their bag said was 3.67 grams per gallon and 2.42 blah 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 grams per gallon so i rounded down to the next whatever and that's how we ended up with 3.6 2.4 and 1.2 is literally just off the Jax label. So even if you never heard of me, you never heard of Capulator, you never heard of Jack Meoff, who is actually Ivan from the Jungle Boys, well before the Jungle Boys. If you've never heard of any of us who have been pushing Jax and 3 to one formula over the past 10 years now, you could just read the instructions right off the label and be extremely successful and have the exact same formula that, uh, you know, spreadsheets and tech and breaking all these numbers down and you guys get confused, it, it's literally just what the company recommends. Two fifty shipping into Canada. Wow, that is expensive. You say it's still worth it, but that's so that's the other thing. A lot of companies like Jax, and what they make is an eleven, a uh, five eleven twenty six, and it's usually called the hydroponic special. And a lot of companies make that mix, whether they're Jax or not, and it can usually be found outside of the U.S. So like Canada, like EU. So you may not use Jack's Hydro, but you'll use Hydroponic Special plus Calcium Nitrate and Epsom Salt or something like that. Is what it is. And yes, sir. So I uh, I have these these little two pound bags because they uh, they show off the label and whatever. I help them out that way. But uh, I buy twenty five pound bags. Generic. Always buy 25 pound bags. It's uh, 50 bucks a bag. So it's, it's for me, it comes out to $162 for 25 pounds of each to my door. Uh, and that's what it always comes out to. And that's extremely cheap. And there's really um, nothing that's going to, uh, to compete with that. But anyway, the 25 pound bags are a huge value compared, compared to like the two pound or the four pound, but it is what it is. Okay, let's go through chat. Um, I had one bag last me like multiple years. I had one one bag last me multiple years, and then I had another, and then I went through another. It all depends on how much you're growing. Um, twenty five pound bag is thirty five hundred gallons of solution at three point six, two point four. Uh, 1.2 grams per gallon, and you're going to have a third of calcium nitrate left over after that. So if you buy the 25-pound bags, you will get 3,500 gallons, 3,500 gallons of 1,000 ppm ready-to-use solution. Will Jack's work in a water farm module? Why wouldn't it work on a modern water farm module? It's a hydroponic, readily 100% readily available nutrient plant. Yes, it'll work in a water farm. Yara calcium nitrate is cheaper, someone says. It is. Yara, and that's the thing. Jax doesn't make calcium nitrate. This is not Jax's formula. This is not Jax's anything. This is an elemental salt. This is generic. This isn't anyone's blend. This isn't anyone's whatever. Calcium nitrate is what brand of calcium nitrate I use. 
I don't fucking care. I use whatever I can buy for a decent price. Um, I prefer to use Jacks because I know them and I just get everything shipped from them and I support them with a few extra dollars because what's 50 pounds for a bag of calcium nitrate versus, you know, 38 bat, you know, give my 10 bucks to Jacks. That's why I do it. But if you want to buy Yar calcium nitrate, calcium nitrate is calcium nitrate. Some older stuff is like 50. Like 13% nitrogen compared to 15, but you know, check your label. Long story short, it's the same thing. The same goes for MKP, monopotassium phosphate. Uh, that is what I use. We'll go into that right now because a lot of people are asking, when do I use my bloom formula and this and that with MKP? Um, but before we go into it, the same thing goes for that MKP of what brand MKP do you use? Monopotassium phosphate is monopotassium phosphate. Doesn't matter who makes it just is what it is. So whatever you can get for a decent price, shipped to you, all that, that is what I would use. So with that said, I said this at the beginning. Um, I said this at the beginning. Jax 321 is the best nutrient formula I have ever used. It's better than MKP Boost. It's better than Lucas. It's better than GH. It's the best formula I have ever used personally. The Boost formula was not brought around by me to boost flowers in any way. There was nothing that I was doing that needed to be boosted. You guys can go back and look at all my runs, the Gorilla Glue runs, everything. There's nothing that is needed a bulk, any help in the bulk department, any help in the flowering department, the speed, anything. So what I call the booster formula, the only reason I refer to it as a booster formula is because it just happens to coincide in what every other company is recommending as a boost or a bloom booster which essentially is just a PK boost. Now that comes about from, um, the PK boost comes about from tomato farmers. Tomatoes are really hot, they, they just need a lot, of, a lot of calcium and they need a lot of uh, potassium. And so phosphorus is okay, they actually don't need a ton of it, but PK boost, they do it anyway. Anyway, um, and in tomato farming, it's actually done at the beginning of flower, the first two weeks. Now, if you'll notice in Jax's recommended feed schedules, their first two weeks of bloom, they always recommend their bloom booster formula. That's because they are, you know, they've been doing this at this hydroponic tomato farming for so long and the similarities are there between cannabis and, and tomatoes. So anyway, um, that is what they recommend. That is that is counter to a lot of the uh, the myths and and any other, you know, hydroponic industry people who recommend their bloom, their bloom boosters at week six or seven or five or six, well into flower. The plants aren't 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 diving in for phosphor at that point. They still they're pushing on their potassium levels, but nonetheless they're not diving in for phosphor at that level anymore. So here, the correct time if you are going to use just a bloom booster would be at the beginning of flower. Now my issue with most bloom boosters is uh, is they just do not they're they're just not complete. They're not complete at all. They don't. Uh, they don't hold the micros. They don't hold the calcium levels. They they're usually fairly low on um, nitrogen, which isn't a horrible thing. But at that point in our in our uh, growth cycle with with cannabis, it needs nitrogen. It needs calcium. It needs all essentially those the vegetative based nutrients all throughout up and through that third week. In addition to the phosphor and potassium that they're using to create bud formation or, or flower formation. God, guys, some of your questions are just, I cannot even understand them. Okay, so anyway, um, someone asked me, when do I add my bloom formula? If I'm going to run my bloom formula, oh, if I'm going to run my bloom, bloom formula, the GG Boost, I'm going to run it from the start of flower. I'm going to run it from the start of flower all the way through. 
Now I've done runs where I kick it in at week five. I've done runs where I only run it for the first two weeks. The Bloom formula, and I'll say this every time, is not some magic bullet. I have not found it to do anything above and beyond or anything better than Jack's 321 or other base formulas. It, it just doesn't. Um, people hear the word boost and they, and they think it does, but I have no data showing that. No one else has any data showing that. A lot of people like it. It's a very successful formula. And the reason being is because it's extremely similar to Lucas. So it is a successful formula, but it is not better than 321 in my opinion or my experience. It also takes more components to make. It also uses more phosphor, which is not necessarily the greatest thing to add to runoff. If you wanted to be a you know planet conscious person, you want to limit that phosphor. So there are things about it that I really don't like. It is a successful formula. It does work. But again, I don't think it's anything better above and beyond or anything to uh, look up to above Jack's three, the basic three, two, one. Um, and if you go back to my Jack's, my Jack, my actual Jack's video, I say the only verified ca cannabis ratio is the 314, which is actually what Jack's 321 is, not the 112 that Lucas would be. So, eh, is what it is. Um, I have not tried Veg Bloom nutrients, but. I have not tried Veg Bloom nutrients here, but I'm sharing my screen with you guys again, and you can see Veg Bloom is in column D here, and we can compare that to Jacks on the first one here. We'll actually just move it over. Um, anyway, you'll, you'll see. Uh, what I really like about VegBloom, the number one thing that I absolutely love about VegBloom is their calcium content. And if you look at their formula, they don't do it in a form of calcium nitrate. They're getting a lot of their calcium from a uh, calcium chloride, a calcium carbonate. There's a few forms. Um, but anyway, they don't tie it to their nitrogen. And that is the one thing I do really like about VegBloom. But what you'll notice about VegBloom, and it's it's clear when you look at the elemental, you're like, oh, why is, why is VegBloom? So much less than than Jacks or anything at this point. And anytime you look at the total elemental and you realize it's less, um, you got to say what's missing. Well, Vegbloom has a lot of calcium. Vegbloom has nearly no magnesium. 36 ppm compared to what we run in the elevated Jacks of 90 of 93. But really, a standard recipe is right around 45 to 50. Um, so even that is a touch of low compared to uh, a standard recipe. But if we're running cocoa or running LEDs or in general, cannabis is magnesium hungry, uh, just how she is. Um, we're going to want this. We're going to be adding magnesium on top of that. And since Veg Bloom has a lot of calcium already in there, what do we do? We don't need calcium. So we're not going to add CalMag, boys and girls. What are we going to add? Give you guys two seconds to answer here. This is, this is just like school. What are we adding? If we need just magnesium, what do we add? We don't need calcium. Ah, there we go. Jesus, took you guys long enough. Very good. We're learning, we're learning, we're learning. Okay, so VegBloom could, in my opinion, use some magnesium sulfate. Now, someone in the chat just says, looks like VegBloom is a lot of sulfur-based. No, incorrect. Notice VegBloom is only 65 parts per million sulfur. That probably equates to around a 200 ppm of sulfate. Uh, there is not actually that much sulfur in there. Another kind of beneficial thing of Veg Bloom. It's not a bad mix. A little expensive price per uh, price per gram, this and that. But Veg Bloom is actually a very solid uh, solid nutrient. And maybe next week we can show you how to DIY Veg Bloom. I'm sure that would piss those guys off, but it's what it is. So yes, Veg Bloom, in my opinion, could use a little bit of magnesium, um, but in their opinion, could could as well too. And that's why they tell you with RO water, things like that, um, you know, to get the stability of their pH, you need to add a little quote unquote cow mag. But uh, yeah, that they have little 
they're missing some zinc, they're missing some copper. Both of these add to the instability of pH. There's 239 watching. Jesus Christ, I don't even know how many are watching. I forget. Um, yeah, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not. The whole YouTube spiel. Okay. All right, let's get back to chat. Um, it would be cool to have MBK Industries Raw. Yeah, I can put it on there. It's um, actually it's, it's a good idea. I don't know why I haven't got them. I actually uh, I appreciate Harley and everything he does with the whole MPK crew over there. But more more importantly, I like Harley. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, I can add it to uh, add it to the list. No problem. These were just the list that I have right now. Were back in the day when people were talking like, oh, I you know I use GH. What you know that was an obvious one. And everyone was like, oh, I use Canna. I use Canna. And so we had those on there. A uh, veg blue, you know. It's extremely easy to compare uh, dry nutrients, and even even liquid isn't too big of an issue. But if we're going dry versus dry, we can we can compare extremely fairly accurately all day long, um, which is very interesting because I actually broke down Veg Bloom's um, newest. Where did it go? Or no, excuse me, not Veg Bloom. I shouldn't say Veg Bloom. I don't want to say Veg Bloom. I broke down Floriflex's newest nutrient line because a lot of people, Floriflex was on a, here, we're going to share this, share the screen. I'm going to show you guys this. Um, Floriflex was on one sharing with everyone on Instagram on how they, uh, how good their new nutrient line is. Now, if we look over here on the right section here, you can see I have, we'll just put it right here. Do that. Okay, so right here in the middle, I have the Floriflex Veg and I have the Floriflex Bloom. Now, what these say is it says Floriflex V at two to two. That means V1 plus V2 at two grams to two grams. So that's one to one ratio, which is exactly what they recommend. And right next to it, we have Floriflex B, which means Bloom at 2 to 2.5, which is a ratio of 1 to 1.25, which is exactly what they recommend on their website. Now, I posted these numbers because they're good numbers. The MPKs, all that, they are what they are. There's nothing you can say about them. They're decent. The bloom, in my opinion, is a touch low on nitrogen, but not the end of the world. Um, both of them have no magnesium and no calcium, so they're going to need a calcium and magnesium supplement. So that could be in the form of calcium nitrate, which is probably pretty good with the bloom because we can balance out that lower nitrogen. But if we go to the veg and we say, oh man, you're really low on the calcium in the veg, how are we going to add calcium nitrate? It's not really a good idea because we're, we're already pushing close to 150 ppm of uh, nitrogen. So if we add calcium nitrate at, you know, half gram per gallon, all of a sudden we're at like 200 and change parts per million of nitrogen and that's a lot. So we might have to look for something like a calcium carbonate or a calcium chloride, which isn't perfect, but it works, um, to supplement those calcium numbers. Like I said, on the bloom, it's a little easier because we can probably get uh, calcium nitrate in there and then also Epsom. It'd all be good. Anyway, long story short, I posted these numbers because if you look, the veg number, let's, let's do this. I'm going to go like this. If you look, the veg number is actually extremely close to the Jax Hydro. Now I have Jax Hydro and the veg number right next to each other. You can see these numbers are fairly close. The only difference being that Jax has all the micros in it, which Floriflex doesn't. And that is something very interesting I'm just gonna say right now. Floriflex DM'd me super pissed that they had no micros in their mix. And they said, why the fuck are, you know, what the hell dude? Like, 
we support your company and we have all this. We have tests showing we have these micros and those MPKs are wrong. And basically grilling me saying, Gigi, you're lying about our product. I said, dude, this is exactly from your fucking label, dude. I went to your website. I pulled the numbers straight off your goddamn label and put them into the calculator. And this is what comes up. And their response is, well, we have tests showing that's different. And my response was, so your label on your website and your product is vastly different than what a nutrient solution test would show? And their response was, well, we support your product. Don't be such a dick, basically. So that's what I have to say about Floriflex, regardless of the company. But these are the numbers that are on their actual label and on their website. So when I'm showing you guys these, if you do go complain to Floriflex, they might try to say something different. But the fact is, these are straight off their fucking logos or labels. Whew, that got me super heated when he tried to lie about that. Um, anyway, if we compare this to the Jack's booster of my MPK, my booster, you can see that these are extremely similar. So the Veg Bloom Veg versus Jack's 321 or the Veg Bloom Bloom versus My Bloom Formula. Now you'll notice My Bloom Formula does just fine in the micros. Any other Bloom Formula, not so much. And that's kind of the, the one benefit of My Bloom Formula over a basic, just, and a, just a basic PK, is this is a complete formula, not just a PK boost. Um, anyway, now with that said, I don't agree that the Bloom Formula does something better than the hydro formula in bloom. To me, what they're claiming as a veg formula is really, really close to a good bloom formula. It could use a touch more uh, potassium in my, in my opinion and definitely more calcium and magnesium. But nonetheless, that is a good ratio to me. The Floriflex bloom is definitely uh, a little too PK heavy. Not, not too much, but a little bit. And uh, those are just my, that's just kind of my, uh, my thoughts on it. See a couple of you guys in the chat bringing up Floriflex because they are the new uh, the new company to the game. Um, you know, everyone wants to get on it. So this, I'm getting a lot of questions on what do you think of Floriflex, this or that, blah blah blah. So that that's my opinion on it, um, and my opinion is nothing other than the numbers. Uh, what about mega crop? I'll put mega crop in here. Um, I've ran their formula. I don't. Uh, I don't remember what exactly it is. It's not a secret formula either. Um, mega crop is. It's pretty similar. The, so the issue with mega crop to me is mega crop's a one part. If I have a calcium issue, what do I have to do? I have to go get a different calcium product. If I have a magnesium pro issue, I have to go get Epsom salt, which you know I have a shit ton. It's not a big deal. But you have to add those things. If I wanted less nitrogen, how am I going to do that in a one-part solution? If I needed more phosphor, how am I going to do that in a one-part solution? I'm going to be going and getting other parts. So to me, um, I've never jumped on the, the mega crop bandwagon, but I see the market that it's that it's going towards, and it's the people who say, why do I have to use two bags? Why can't I just use one? It is what it is. Yes, so and that's what I was going to get to. Mega crop has extras like silica. They have some humic in there. They, I'm curious on what the levels are of, the, of what they have in there. Um, but essentially, mega crop's idea was everyone's mixing all this shit, and most people aren't tweaking like like I am and a lot of you guys out there. So let's give them a product that's just bam, pour it, pour it out of the bag, the one bag, and it's going to work 95% of the time. And that's what mega crop is. So when we're adding. So when we're adding products like Fulvic, like Recharge, like Mycos, like Tribus, you guys follow the Jungle Boys, some Bios, whatever. Megacrop's idea is to add a lot of this stuff into the mix already. So you don't have to constantly inoculate, blah, 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 blah. My issue is these people who make these products battle it out based on concentration potency of their of their microbes what they have um, what they're giving how much kelp how much uh you know are they using a cane sugar are they using molasses what are they 
you know, there's a lot of differences. So a, again, a one part product that doesn't give you the flexibility or in my opinion, without the actual numbers on there, no one's gonna beat the concentrations of bacillus and tribus. It's just not gonna happen. You can't put this into a powdered form and get these kind of concentrations. It just doesn't work. So anyway, um, I think Mega Crop has some has a good idea, a really good like mentality behind it on what it could be, but it's not um, it's not a nutrient tweaker's formula in any way. It's a uh, it's a pour it and go kind of formula. But I'll put it I'll put it in here because it does uh, it does have a decent um, MPK ratio, and uh, might as well put it put it on the list. I'll just keep putting um, I'll just break down every bit every bit of nutrients that uh, that we come across. Um, and if you guys say you want it on the list, I will put it on the list. It might not happen for a week or so. Give me some time, but uh, we will continue to add to this list, and it can be a uh, an information resource out there um, to kind of break some truths. How do you use in a sterile res? You, if you're running a sterile res, you're not going to be running any of these products. Um, sterile means no living shit, and these are all living products. Um, I don't, I don't run a sterile res or a sterile system, and I also don't hold on to. Uh, I'm on top. I, I'm very active in my gardens. Um, I, I don't let reses sit for three weeks at a time. If if a res lasts me a week, a week that's a long time for me, because um, I'm drained away. So it's not like it's recirculating or whatever. That would be different. But for me, in a drained away system, I prefer to mix my nutrients and use them as as quickly as possible. That's obviously not easy or doable for a lot of people. I um, mean, you're not going to have issues if you don't. But for me with microbes, it, it just makes it so much easier to mix my solution, add my microbes, and go through that res real quickly. Organic with synthetics? Yes, organics with synthetics. I hope you know that all, all nutrients that plants absorb are synthetic or quote, unquote synthetic. There are no... There, there's one nutrient that they absorb that's organic, and it's carbon itself. Everything else is, by definition, no carbon attached to it is not organic. And that means your batshit filled soil, that the bacteria break all that down and convert it into a non-organic plant available form that the plant takes up and then transitions it back into an organic molecule, such as sugar or whatever. There is no organic nutrients, period that are absorbed by the plant. It's just, that's the science behind it. So with that said, synthetics and organics, yes. Organics help the plant's health. They help, um, they also help stimulate the uptake of these inorganic nutrients. Um, that, um, they help stimulate the uptake as well as they help some signaling and some other things. So yes, we do this to improve the uptake and the efficiency of these quote unquote synthetic nutrients. But yes, no matter what you're using, your plant is taking up nitrate nitrogen, which is a synthetic ion. Now things like, uh, you know, fulvic can take a non chelated or a non available ion, say like a calcium ion that's, that's not chelated, is basically floating around uncharged and just, oh, the plant, the plant may hit it and it'll never grab it. But if it chelates it with something like a fulvic acid, um, that now becomes available and won't just be kind of floating around aimlessly through a solution. When it gets contact with the roots, it can now actually get to, get attracted and uptaked. So there's, there's other things on that. But, uh, but yes, we use, we're using these synthetics and these living and um, you know, microbial additives in a symbiotic relationship, which is the same symbiotic relationship that fully organic soil would be using to take it from organic matter, this leaf filled with carbon and nitrogen and other shit, to break it down, num, 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 num. bacteria eats it and shits it out as a nitrate. The same nitrate that's in this, this is calcium nitrate. And when it goes into water, it is no longer calcium nitrate, it is floating calcium and it is floating nitrate. The same nitrate that your bacteria just converted.
You need bigger, more roots. One suggestion for that. Try this. The one, the one product, I've used all of these. This is a bacillus, this is a multi-pack. I use uh, skunk labs. Out of every microbial product I've ever used, just like I say Jack's Hydro is the best I've ever used, I have never had something that gives me such explosive root growth and rhizosphere action like Tribus Original. I use the Bloom, I've used the Grow, they're good, but Tribus Originals is the way to go. Anyway, I know that sounds like a sales spiel and all that, um, but the shit's fucking good. It's the only thing, like, I'm not, Tribus cost me, this bottle of Tribus cost me as much as my whole fucking Jack's regiment. As 50 pounds of jacks, this costs the same. And I'm telling you that that cost is worth it. That is how good this, this is in the rhizosphere. But that cost to change my, my nutrient costs from $150 to $300, that cost is worth it. The Green Grow Show. Where did I buy my heat sinks for my photo boost strips? I bought them from Heat Sink USA, and you can find all that information on the video for the photo boost build. How do you test for activity in the riser store? You can't, I mean, I can't. You People can. Yes, it can be tested. I can't test. My test is... Well, you guys have seen it. Go on my story on Instagram right now. You can see all the top roots throughout everything. Um, you can see it, or you can just look. You just look at your healthy plants. You can know after growing of years and years and years on what what your plants are used to, what what it should look like. Oh, it smells like carrots. When your roots are healthy, you smell like carrot because carrots are root. Oh, it's so good. They're so white. They're so oh, so good. That's how I tell. Um, you'll notice just the growth. Oh, mammoth. I don't have mammoth here. Do I have it? I don't have any mammoth left. Um, I don't like mammoth. Well, I shouldn't say I don't like mammoth. Mammoth just doesn't do anything for me. Mammoth, I ran, I ran three runs in a row very consistently with my eyes on it, trying to see what was going on. I never noticed one single gram or visual difference whatsoever from mammoth from all my runs versus my controls. Never saw a difference. Didn't see anything negative. Plants were great. They were great runs, beautiful flowers, good weight, but nothing above and beyond what I'm used to. At that same time, I had Mammoth, I had Recharge, I had a bunch of things that I was using. I went and I found Tribus before tri or before Impello was anyone big. I found them on my own. I saw what they were doing. I was like, yeah, I'm going to give it a try. I got some samples and I sat on those samples for like two months. And I didn't want to use them because I was using Recharge and I was using this or that. And I was a little uneducated on some things. Um, well, I did my research, I found out what was going on, found out the numbers, and uh, started looking around, and nothing was even close to Tribus. Um, so what I ended up doing is I started using it on the one light, one plant grow back in the 3 by 3 And immediately, I saw the most crazy results I've ever seen, as well as I used it in my vegetative garden on some one-gallon plants that literally made the roots explode above and beyond the top of the uh, top. It was, cra it was crazy. Um, and meanwhile, I was using Recharge. I had Recharge on some plants. I, I had, uh, I even had some of Caps Bennies, which are really good, but they're a little expensive. Um, uh, anyway, Tribus blew my mind strictly on results. I didn't want to like it. They were kind of like, if anything, I actually tried to get some free Tribus off them. And they were basically like, well, go to our, you know, basically said, fuck you. We don't care who you are, um, which is fine. That's fine. Um, so anyway, I wasn't like gung ho to use it, and I didn't really think it was going to do anything crazy or do anything above and beyond. And uh, I pretty much shoved my own foot right in my mouth, and I had the most crazy root growth I've ever seen in my life. So quickly, almost immediately, it was uh So that was what sold me on on Tribus. 
Um, I'm not going to use their, I'm, I won't use their organic nutrients. I won't use anything else other than Tribus. Um, I have just been sold by my own results on Tribus itself. Yeah, I, I see good, okay, so someone says, I see good growth with Recharge. Recharge is great. Recharge has a few things in it. It's got Trichoderma, it's got all the, it's got some Bacillus, it's got some um, standard uh, Microderma. It's okay. But here's a fact for you. The amount of Bacillus that's in here compared to in here, um, this, is this a liter? One liter of Tribus is the equivalent of 35 pounds of recharge. 35 pounds. 35 pounds of recharge. Recharge is so soupy with molasses that if you use the amount that you would need to actually get to the concentrations that Tribus and others are giving you, why is it better? The root growth is better. You'll see right away when you when you when you pour 10, 10 billion colonizing units in there per milliliter compared to uh, what are we at? Ten billion compared to one hundred million. One hundred million sounds like a lot, but compared to ten fucking billion, it's nothing. And that is the difference. Um, and when we're talking about microbial additives in a, here, here you go for you organic people, in a uh, you know, somewhat synthetic or a sterile environment, if you look at the graph, when we feed microbes, the population goes up. It holds, and then it begins to decline over time because there's, no, there's nothing to support the life of those microbes throughout. In a soil, it's more up and steady. But in a hydro situation, it's up and down. We refeed, we re it comes down. We refeed, it goes back up, it goes down. If you didn't have the concentrations, it would never get to go up because immediately it gets hit with death, with battle. I think I think of microbes as like a revolutionary army, like the war, like the revolutionary army back in the day when there was just hundreds and hundreds of lines of soldiers, fucking cannon fire, muskets, shit going down. The front line goes down, but it's okay because 99 more lines of soldiers are right behind it. That is what Tribus is. Sure, a few of them, a few might die here and there. A hundred million might die of them. That's fine because there's 10 billion per milliliter in here um, to kind of deal with whatever killing agent. So if you have chlorine in your water, there's more microbes than there are chlorine, guaranteed. Um, and that's why they uh, they can show, they actually have a test showing with, with UC roots, undercurrent roots, that uh, at the recommended doses, Tribus actually survives the UC roots because it's so concentrated. So that, that, that's it. Enough of, enough of the tribish sales spiel. You guys get it. Shit's fucking awesome. I'm not bashing recharge hard. That's the thing. I, I don't even like to bring this topic up. This is the facts of the matter. This is nothing but the numbers that are on the labels. If recharge had more, more concentration, I would use it. Um, when I put the amount of recharge recommended into my bucket, and I have just scales of seriously just thick molasses from the cane sugar around the, the thing, I, I just don't want that in, in my medium. Um, recharge just doesn't just doesn't do it for me. Oh, trust me, dude, I'm bashed mammoth. Mammoth suck, mammoth didn't do anything for me. It is what it is. So I speak nothing about, nothing other than my results. You guys can do it. You can go buy some, you don't have to buy it. You can grab a free sample of Trivis. You can go buy some recharge for 25 bucks and you can go head to head yourselves and you guys can see. I just drank it. It's pretty chill. Actually, the Tribus guys, so that's how safe it is. The Tribus guys all took a shot on Instagram of this one time. This stuff smells so bad. Yeah, I mean, mammoth smells pretty bad, but this stuff is... No bueno.
Oh, okay. How are we doing? Two eighty five. Jesus Christ, people. Okay, let's uh, let's get a few more a few more questions. I'm gonna bounce out of here fairly soon. This was kind of unscheduled. Wasn't sure where exactly I was going with this. How it's how well it's gonna go, but um, I didn't get a video uploaded for you guys this morning, so I figured this is kind of give you some information, give you something to uh, to work with here. Um, but anyway, let some questions roll in last minute. See uh, see what's going on. What about Mills? Don't I honestly don't know anything about uh, about what they got going on in, in their mixes. Seen some good runs with them. I know the price tag's pretty high. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of comments saying I'm bashing recharge, and I, I don't mean to bash it. Again, it's not bashing anything. All I'm doing is strictly talking about the numbers that they put on their bottles versus the numbers that other people put on theirs. That is simply it. How do you handle Newt Burn with Jax? Just lower the PPM or straight water. Yeah, just lower the PPM. Like if, you, if you're noticing too much nitrogen in your mix, what do we do, boys and girls? We drop the calcium nitrate. Now, most of the time, it's a nitrogen burn. If you're noticing any kind of burn, it's usually nitrogen. So that would be my first recommendation. If not, then yes, you maybe want to drop your potassium and everything else that goes along with it. You can do that by bringing jacks from maybe, say, 3.6 to 3.0. Uh, Okay, so before we go, the Bloom Boost formula has someone asked, has it changed? Now you will see that in I, I explained the Bloom Boost formula in like six different videos, pretty in depth. One of them being the Jax video, I explained it the most in depth. And I actually say to say, I think I say 2.7 grams per gallon of calcium nitrate. Well, the reason that was is because I was growing purple punch at the time I was like working on that formula. Purple punch and Kobe and everything I got from symbiotics was extremely, extremely calcium dependent. It would go into a calcium deficiency so, so quickly. So I was up at 2.7 grams per gallon of calcium nitrate to add that extra calcium. Um, if you go back to the blackberry cream updates before then, you'll, you'll realize the original bloom formula was two grams, two grams jacks, two grams calcium nitrate, two grams Epsom salt, and one gram of MKP. That, in my opinion, the two, two, to 1.2, that is the most accurate baseline formula. Anything else would be adjusted off. So when I said 2.4 grams per gallon or 2.7 grams per gallon of calcium nitrate, that was because the strain I had at the time was, like I said, very calcium dependent. So really my recommendation is 2, 2, 2, 1.2 um, and go off that. So if you have, uh, have some issues. So yes, the Bloom Boost formula changes because of exactly what I've said at the beginning of this video is each one of these components holds holds something. We have our magnesium. We have our calcium and most of our nitrogen. We have our potassium and phosphorus and our micros with a little bit of nitrogen. So knowing what each one of these bags contains and what it has to offer to the table of the formula allows us to make the adjustments accordingly. So yes, so to answer that question, yes, my, my bloom formula has slightly changed up and down over the uh, last few years, but all that's actually been changing in it is essentially the nitrogen and calcium levels, mostly the nitrogen levels. Um, Coot, dude, just original. 
everyone has so many questions. If you ever go somewhere and there's some weird product or whatever, you can't make a decision, just always go with the original. Um, so let me tell you, there's an Omri listed and a Tribus original. The only difference is if you plan on holding on to it for any period of time, get the regular Tribus. If you're a super big, you know, hippie farmer and you can't stand a little bit of uh, preservative in there, then go with the Omri. Or if you plan on literally just getting this bottle and dumping it straight into your res, say you, you know, if you order like a five gallon thing and you're going to be putting it into a farm, get the Omri listed one. You don't need those preservatives. The only difference between the Omri and the regular Tribus original is they have a little bit of preservative in the, uh, in the regular. The Omri doesn't have any preservatives whatsoever. So it's shelf life is a little shorter, but like I said, for those of you guys that matter, it doesn't have any preservatives. Yeah, spectrum readout of new lights are on the uh, on the website, along with all the information. Trust me, guys. I, I, someone says he's an old hippie in there. Dude, my dad, my dad was an old hippie. I'm a second generation grower. I learned to grow from him when I was 14. It's just, I got nothing against hippies. When I say when I say that, I just I mean it for today's era of all these people who just want to be, you know, they want to be conscious. They want to, they want to be good to the planet. They want to do all these, these big goals, but they really, they're so messed up in how they, I'm not even going to talk about people. It's not even, a, but that, that's what I see is I don't, I don't mean to use that term hippie because sometimes it comes off as I'm talking shit on them. I'm not term of endearment. Yes. There we go. Yep. So, okay. I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. This has been a solid live. There's like 300 people in here right now. So, um, it's Sunday. It's, hey, it's 11, 11, honey. Megan. Love you too. She thought I died or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, you guys go have, have a good rest of your Sunday and the weekend. This is obviously going to, it's recorded. It'll go up live. You guys can go back and watch it. So if you guys are just jumping on now, I talked about Floriflex. I talked about Veg Bloom. I talked about Jax, the Bloom Booster. It wasn't exactly the most structured or best live in my opinion. I didn't know exactly where I was going with it, but uh, there's definitely a lot of information here and I'm sure you guys can make some solid educated decisions. So yeah. All right, guys. Peace.